We always have two buckets when we're mm. setting up the sprayer. You've got one that's going to hold the single gallon in it. That way it doesn't get kicked over, knocked over, things like that. And the other is going to be your discard bucket. Okay. Yep. So you're going to take your siphon hose, which is going to be the, the big intake hose. So this is your prime. And that's going to be your siphon. We're going to take our gallon of paint here. We're going to set it in the five so it doesn't get knocked over. And then we'll set the paint over to the side so that this 440 can drop the siphon in. So we're going to drop the siphon in. And what does the siphon tube do, John? So the siphon is going to be your intake uh, tube for your sprayer. So that's what is going to be sitting in the paint or when it comes time to clean, what's, what's going to be sitting in the water, that's what comes through. And the air the sprayer works by creating a vacuum basically with the piston and pushing that paint to the gun, but you gotta get the air out of it. So we're gonna grab the prime valve and that's where we're gonna take our discard bucket. We're gonna set it up next to the sprayer and then grab your, your prime hose, the, the small hose, that guy there. You're gonna set it in the discard bucket and then we've got power run. We've already stretched out our hose and we've got our gun back here with us. You're going to go ahead and turn, when you turn it on, it's going to be on clean. You're gonna go ahead and bump that up to, um, on a 440, it's just when the light starts to turn green for what we're spraying. So we're going about 1800 PSI. So you go ahead and power it on. And then I always hold the prime hose when we're getting started, just in case there's some pressure and it kicks up, we don't wanna make a mess. So if you've never used an airless sprayer before, what type of knobs or valves or mm. buttons do you have on that thing? So we've got our, this is our siphon. This is our prime hose, the little hose that comes out next to the siphon, which is the big one. And, and then most sprayers are going to follow the same pattern and they're going to be pretty simple. You're going to have your pressure knot or your pressure dial here, which is going to bring your pressure up or down. You're going to have, it's on the back side here so you can't see, there's a little uh, prime valve and that's going to, that, that is going to make it so that it either sends um, fluid through the prime hose or to the gun. And for the most part, if it's pointed down um, alongside the, the prime hose, that's going to be prime. And then when you click it up, that's going to be spray. And then you've got your power. So really you've only got three little things on this that you need to worry about. Power, your pressure knob, and then your prime valve. So let's uh, go ahead, turn it on. Right now the prime valve is down, so it's on prime. You're gonna hold on to the prime hose just so it doesn't kick up. And then we've got to make sure we've got power, which we don't have power. Yep. So most airless sprayers follow uh, the same uh, rules as far as what they have on them. You're going to have your power button or power switch, which will be located somewhere on the body here. You're going to have your pressure uh, valve, or not valve, but your pressure dial, which is going to adjust your pressure either up or down, depending on where you want it. And then they're all going to have a prime valve uh, somewhere down here on the lower housing. And it's going to look, um, almost all of them are going to look like this and they're going to turn down and up. And down is almost always going to be prime. So a way I remember that is it's coming down along the prime hose right here. And, and so that's going to pull air up the siphon and through the prime hose to get air out of the system. And then you can click that up to spray and it's going to start sending uh, fluid instead of through the prime hose to your spray hose and towards your gun. And what would this be right here, John? So here we've got a little uh, reservoir that you can fill with uh, TSL or piston lube, which is essentially just a mineral oil. And what that does is that's going to go directly to the piston and it helps one, lubricate it, but two, it dissolves any of the paint that's on that actual piston so that nothing's in there and drying and scratching up that piston. Always good practice to make sure you put some TSL or piston lube into your sprayer when you're done using it at the end of every day. So uh, Reagan's going to hold on to the prime hose. He's going to turn it on. We've got it um, switched down to prime already and the pressure is set up um, on a Titan 440. It's right between the white and green. That's going to be about 18, 1900 PSI. So go for it. Oh, hold on one sec. Before he starts this and it starts getting a little noisy, he's going to turn that on and he's going to let it run through while the water or the protector comes out until he starts to see paint. And then he's going to hold 
this bucket right here and then as soon as he sees paint coming through he's going to switch that through over to the paint can again and let that paint run back into the paint can and you want to give it about five ten seconds of constantly running so that it's getting the air out before we click that back up to spray and what's the importance of holding on to the prime tube? And we always want to hold on to that prime tube because uh, occasionally in the middle of repriming or things like that, it can build up some pressure, especially on a bigger pump. And then when you turn that down to prime, it'll release all of that pressure and kick up. And that's how we can always tell we have a new guy because they've got a nice stripe of, of dirty water or paint coming up their clothing. And I think I've done that before and i think you have oh i think everyone does it at least <laughs> once all right here we go all right I, one of my pet peeves is when this prime hose just gets set into the paint. Occasionally that's what you have to do, but we will typically put that back in our discard bucket. That way it's not building up a bunch of paint on the outside and it's just going to sit in that dirty water. All right. So the next step we're going to do is we almost always operate with an extension, even if it's just a six inch extension on the end of the gun. And part of the reason for that is when you're, when you're, uh, loading up your gun and you don't have an extension that paint tends to come out and create more of a mess or more of a splash back against the bucket than it does if you've got an extension in this case we're setting up for gutters so we're going to be putting a pretty big uh, three foot extension onto it one of the the key things before you put the extension on those you'll grab the extension and we'll take some wd-40 and we'll always spray some wd-40 on the female side of the threads that way we're not getting paint that's sticking to the inside and it stays cleaner longer. So now we're, we're going to attach the extension on, it just screws right on, and then we're always going to use a wrench to tighten that up so that we don't have leaks coming through. It seems like there used to be a day where you could just hand tighten them, but no more. We always use a wrench because inevitably it leaks if you don't. It doesn't have to be crazy tight, but you gotta get that nice snug fit onto it. So now what he's going to do is he's going to spray all of the water protector that's in this hose into that discard bucket and you don't want to shoot it directly at that wall because it's going to splash back. You want to spray down and let that water or product curve down along the wall of the bucket. Yeah. As soon as he sees paint starting to come out of here, he's going to move that. He'll let go, he'll move it right to that can, and then you'll squeeze the trigger again. But you don't want that pressure to build up, or it's mm -hmm. going to splash stuff back at you. Okay, so move it pretty quick. Yeah, so you can let go, move it, and then come in because mm -hmm. the pump will start laboring more. Mm -hmm. So stop, so let go, and move it over, pull the trigger. You want to pull that trigger pretty fast, so then it's not. And if that builds up, then it's just going to important that we run the paint through the line for a little while to make sure we've got all the air out. So similar to when we were using this and we would run it about 10 seconds, we'll run that about 10 to 20 seconds and then you can let go. And then we always do a final check. We make sure we're good on product. We make sure we don't have any leaks around our hoses, anything like that, that we've got the pressure set to go. Now all we need, we'll throw the tip on for whatever we're spraying and we're good to go. There you have it, how to operate an airless sprayer. Great explanation, John. What do you think, Reagan? You yeah. think you can handle it now? Yeah, pretty simple, pretty straightforward. So and there you go. A couple of things I was just telling Reagan that are most important. One, make sure you've got the buckets. That's pretty key. And then where we see guys make mistakes is one, they don't run enough product through when they're priming or bringing paint to the gun. So you gotta make sure you run that 10 to 20 seconds so there's no air in, in the line. And then just make sure your pressure set where you need it to be. Those are kind of the three things that we're really looking for. Because what does that air in the line do? The air in the line is going to create spits or it's going to be uh, create clogs. So you're, you know, especially using an extension, you're going to get big spits. You're going to um, have an erratic spray pattern um, or you're going to not have enough pressure. If your paint has some debris or things in that, it's not going to have enough pressure to throw 
uh, the, the stuff through the filter. Yeah, even though you have an extension, your extension is going to give you spits, but having air inside the pump is going to give you a lot worse spits. Mm -hmm. So there you have it. Hopefully you've enjoyed this video. If you have, please consider giving us a thumbs up, right, Reagan? Right. Please consider subscribing to our channel. Hit the notification bell. Bam. That way you get notified every time we come out with a new video. Sign us off, John. If you have questions, comments, we don't really care about the complaints. Throw those in the comments below and we will see you on the next video.